I guess I have like, it's a bit of a two-parter. Uh, one is that your connection to your culture does require deliberate effort. I think sometimes we always just think like whatever your, you are genetically, um, you know, is like, there's no, I don't have to put any effort into that. I just am that, right? But uh, to truly, truly feel connected to any part of your identity, you have to put in some sort of practice and put in like habits. And that is something that I think I do regularly now by default because of the work that I do. But I would say for any listeners out there who are trying to work through like their understanding of their culture and, and it, how it plays into their identity to do the extra work of, or, I mean, I don't like to call it work, but, you know, take on the advantage of being able to have conversations with family, um, seek out other people of your culture, um, seek out other foods similar in your culture, immerse yourself in that in any way. I mean, join a book club, maybe where it's like sharing stories about the history of the countries where your parents and your grandparents came from. So if there was one tip, it's like, it. I think it's like, it requires deliberate effort. And the second is that your relationship with your culture will be constantly changing and that's okay. Like, I think the idea, like there's this term where people say like, I'm a bad Asian <laughs> or I'm like bad Asian American. And, you know, I used to feel that way a lot, like a lot of shame. It's like, I'm, I don't know the language well enough or don't know this enough. And honestly there, I think that's okay. Like everyone's relationship with their culture is different and it's going to ebb and flow. It's okay to be a bad Asian sometimes and it's okay to be a good Asian sometimes. So yeah, like there shouldn't be just, a definition of what's good and bad. It's just everyone's right. relationship is different, right? Exactly. And it's all exactly. okay. And it's all okay. Yeah. Yeah. 